Hi everyone and welcome back to Foibles and Fancies. Today I'm going to talk to you about my five favorite reads of 2017. Here they are in no particular order. Firstly, we have Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice, which was first published in 1976 and was her debut novel. Anne Rice is an all-time favorite author of mine, and I first read Interview with a Vampire when I was about 12 or 13 years old. And I continued to read the rest of her Vampire Chronicles, some of which intertwined with her novels about the Mayfair Witches, which were also very good. I actually thought that I'd read all of her Vampire Chronicles, but I did a little bit of research last night, and it turns out she's written a couple in the last few years, so... Apparently not. Some fan I am. My older self wanted to see if I was only into Anne Rice as a teenager, so when I saw that Simon Vance had narrated the audiobook, I decided to pick it up to see if I would still be enthralled by her. I was. I just love the way she writes. She transports the reader into this other realm, and you feel like you're really there. There is so much atmosphere in her writing. Interview with a Vampire was turned into a movie starring Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, and a very young Kristen Dunst, so you may already be aware of the story, but in case you're not, it's about a 200-year-old vampire, Louis, telling his story to a reporter. He describes the process in which he was turned by the infamous vampire Lestat in great detail, although Anne Rice does finesse this in her later novels. He and Lestat lived together for a while, Lestat being the quintessentially cold-blooded vampire, and Louis being at odds with his vampire nature, preferring to drink the blood of animals over the decidedly more tasty and satisfying human blood. Louis finally decides that he cannot stand living with the vampire Lestat anymore and considers leaving. Sensing Louis' imminent departure, Lestat takes action and turns a very young girl into a vampire. Louis, given his non-cold-blooded nature, is compelled to stay so that they can raise their daughter together. The trio stay together for 60 years, and obviously during this time Claudia grows up mentally, but physically she's trapped in a five-year-old's body, which pisses her off. She blames Lestat for her condition and exacts revenge on him, before fleeing to Europe with Louis in the hopes of finding more vampires to answer questions that they felt Lestat was just unable to provide answers to. When in Paris, they find the Théâtre de Vampire, an exclusive, invitation-only theatre where vampires pretend to be humans acting as vampires, a very clever ploy to kill on stage. Louis and Claudia get more than they bargain for while learning about vampire society and find themselves entangled in a very dangerous situation. Next we have Dear Ijewale, or A Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions. Early last year, this book came across my BookPub daily email. I must have been living under a rock because before I saw this, I actually had no idea who Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie was. It was the title that grabbed my attention in the first place, and after clicking to read the blurb, I was captivated, and I had no doubt that I would take advantage of the $1.99 sale. Now, after reading it, I'd have no trouble paying full price for the book. I gorged myself on this book in a couple of hours. I remember this because I was actually on a flight from Toronto to Montreal for work. And I pored over it, rereading most paragraphs several times and highlighting huge chunks of it on my e-reader. At the time, I was thinking that I wanted to print off some of these paragraphs and frame them and hang them around my house as a constant reminder of the messages that I want to teach my daughter. So much of what she says is bitingly obvious, but sometimes very easy to overlook. This book is only 63 pages, but it sticks with you. It's powerful. Adichie has given several TED Talks, and they are all impactful. If you haven't already read her or watched her, I would strongly suggest you give her a taste. On to number three, which was Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. So in the summer of 2017, I had the realization that I could listen to audiobooks in my everyday life, like while driving to work or while walking my dog. In the past, I'd only listened to audiobooks as part of a road trip. I know, I'm a slow learner. What do you do? Bossy Pants was my first in this rediscovery of audiobooks, i.e. was my freebie from Audible. And I have to tell you, it is the perfect gateway audiobook. And it was a great way to rekindle my love for having a story being told to me. Tina Fey is obviously hilarious, but she's also down to earth and insightful. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to her talk about her life and it made me want to take improv classes. Also now, when I trim my daughter's fingernails, I wonder if Tina Fey would think that I've cut too much off. The things that stick with you, huh? Bossy Pants was a great, fun read, and I definitely recommend this one, particularly in audiobook. For those of you doing the Read Harder Challenge, this one would satisfy number 12, which is to read a celebrity memoir. Now, my absolute favorite book of 2017 was The Power of One by Bryce Courtney. It actually ranks up there in my top books of all time. 
I've already done a full review video on the power of one, so I won't get into too much detail here, but it's basically a coming of age story set in South Africa and it made me laugh and cry. It made me feel incredibly uneasy. It made me grin from ear to ear. It made me get pissed off at how awful humanity can be, but it also made me so hopeful about humanity. If that's piqued your interest to find out more, I've linked my video in the description below as well as in the card above. All the books I've mentioned so far, I gave five stars to on Goodreads. The next one I'm gonna to talk to you about, I only gave four stars to, but parts of it have stayed in my mind long after I've finished reading the book that I think it deserves to be on my favorite reads of the year. It is Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verghese. This meaty novel comes in at just over 650 pages. It could have been a little shorter and been just as good, but even so, I still highly recommend it. Set in Addis Ababa in the 60s and 70s and in New York in the 80s, Cutting for Stone is told from Marion's point of view as he looks back on his life. Marion and his conjoined twin brother Shiva are orphaned when their mother dies during childbirth and their father abandons them. Their mother is a nun and a nurse at the hospital and their father is a surgeon. And when they are orphaned, they are adopted by two other doctors and they grow up in and around the hospital. Verghese himself is a doctor and the novel is heavy with medical jargon. He's certainly not afraid of details and both major and minor characters are superbly fleshed out. There is so much packed into this novel, but I'm not gonna get into too much detail here because I'm gonna do a separate review on this another time. I'll link it in the description below when it's up. Ultimately, Cutting for Stone dissects the meaning of family in a sweeping way. I hope you enjoyed this wrap up of my favorite books of 2017. If you did, please like this video and consider subscribing. If you've read any of the books I've talked about, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.